Are you tired of the same old history textbook version of America's past? A People's History of the United States by Howard Zinn offers a fresh perspective on our nation's history by focusing on the experiences of marginalized and oppressed groups. From the arrival of Columbus to the Civil Rights Movement, this book covers it all and provides a new understanding of the events that shaped our country. Join us on this journey as we uncover the hidden history of America and discover how the struggles of the past continue to shape our present. This book will change the way you think about American history, so don't miss out on this eye-opening and thought-provoking read. Chapter 1. Columbus, the Indians, and Human Progress. This chapter covers the arrival of Columbus in the Americas and the impact it had on the indigenous population. Zinn provides a detailed account of the atrocities committed against the native people, including mass murder, enslavement, and the spread of disease. He also highlights the ways in which the colonizers erased the history and culture of the native people and imposed their own worldview on the land and its inhabitants. He also provides accounts of resistance and survival of the native population throughout the colonization process. Chapter 2. Drawing the Color Line. This chapter covers the American Revolution and the role of enslaved Africans and indentured servants in the war effort. Zinn examines the motivations of the Founding Fathers and shows how their actions did not align with their rhetoric of freedom and democracy, especially when it comes to the issue of slavery. He also provides examples of enslaved people who fought for their freedom, such as Crispus Attucks and Salem Poor. He also examines the ways in which the elite used the rhetoric of freedom and liberty to justify their own interests and the oppression of others. Chapter 3. Persons of Mean and Vile Condition. This chapter covers the early years of the Republic, including the Louisiana Purchase and the War of 1812. Zinn highlights the displacement of Native Americans and the expansion of slavery during this period, and provides examples of resistance from both groups. He also examines the ways in which the interests of the North and South collided, and how this would eventually lead to the Civil War. He also provides a detailed account of the treatment of enslaved people and native population during this period, and how it was in contrast to the rhetoric of democracy and freedom. Chapter 4. Tyranny as Tyranny. This chapter covers the years leading up to the Civil War and the abolitionist movement. Zinn provides a detailed account of the ways in which enslaved people resisted their condition and the efforts of abolitionists to end slavery. He also examines the ways in which the interests of the North and South collided, and how this would eventually lead to the Civil War. He also provides examples of the ways in which the elite on both sides used the issue of slavery for their own interests and how the enslaved population were caught in the middle of the conflict. Chapter 5 a kind of revolution. This chapter covers the years of Reconstruction and the ways in which the rights and freedoms promised to African Americans were systematically denied. Zinn provides examples of the ways in which the government and white supremacists used violence and intimidation to maintain white supremacy, such as the Ku Klux Klan. He also examines the ways in which the efforts of African Americans to gain equality and justice were met with resistance. He also provides examples of the ways in which the government dismantled the progress made during Reconstruction, and the impact it had on the lives of African Americans. Chapter 6. The Impossible Victory. Vietnam. This chapter covers the rise of industrialization and the labor movement in the late 19th century. Zinn provides examples of the exploitation of workers and the ways in which their struggles were met with repression. He also examines the ways in which the government supported the interests of the rich and powerful, and how this would lead to the rise of progressive movements in the early 20th century. He examines the different labor movements that emerged during this period, such as the Haymarket Affair and the Pullman Strike, and the repression they faced from the government and the elite. He also highlights the ways in which these movements were connected to the larger struggle for social and economic justice. Chapter 7. The Other Civil War. This chapter covers the early 20th century, including World War I and the Red Scare. Zinn provides examples of the ways in which the government suppressed dissent and targeted marginalized groups, such as labor activists and immigrants. 
He also examines the ways in which the government used the war effort to justify imperialism abroad, and how this would lead to the rise of progressive movements in the 1920s and 1930s. He also examines the ways in which the government's actions during this period, such as the Espionage Act and the Palmer Raids, were in contrast to the rhetoric of democracy and freedom. Chapter 8. The Coming Revolt of the Guards. This chapter covers the Great Depression and the New Deal. Zinn provides examples of the ways in which the government's response to the economic crisis failed to address the needs of the most vulnerable populations, such as the unemployed and the poor. He also examines the ways in which the government's policies led to the rise of progressive movements in the 1930s and 1940s. He also examines the ways in which the New Deal policies did not address the root causes of the Depression and the ways in which it was used to consolidate the power of the elite. Chapter 9. The Other Side of World War II. This chapter covers World War II and the post-war period. Zinn provides examples of the ways in which the government used the war effort to justify repression at home, such as the internment of Japanese Americans, and imperialism abroad, such as the dropping of atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. He also examines the ways in which the government used the Cold War as an excuse to continue repression and justify imperialism, and the impact it had on civil liberties and foreign policy. He also highlights the ways in which the movements for social and economic justice, such as the civil rights movement and the anti-war movement, emerged during this period in response to these actions. Chapter 10. The Other Civil War. This chapter covers the 1950s and 1960s, with an emphasis on the civil rights movement and the ways in which the government resisted and repressed the demands for equality and justice. Zinn examines the ways in which the civil rights movement was met with resistance from the government and white supremacists, and provides examples of key figures and events such as Rosa Parks, the Montgomery bus boycott, and the Freedom Rides. He also examines the ways in which the civil rights movement was connected to larger struggles for social and economic justice, such as the labor movement and the anti-war movement. Chapter 11. Or Does It Explode? This chapter covers the movements of the 1960s and 1970s and how they were the continuation of the struggles of the oppressed and marginalized throughout history. It examines the ways in which the civil rights movement, the feminist movement, the environmental movement, and the anti-war movement were interconnected and how they challenged the status quo. Zinn also provides examples of key figures and events such as Martin Luther King Jr., the Black Panthers and the Chicano movement. He also shows how these movements had the power to change the course of history and bring about real change in society. The final chapter of A People's History of the United States, by Howard Zinn, is a reflection on the themes and events covered throughout the book. The author provides an analysis of the ongoing struggles of marginalized and oppressed groups in the United States and how they relate to the past. He emphasizes on how the struggles of the past continue to shape the present and encourages readers to question the traditional narrative of American history, and to think critically about the role of power and oppression in shaping our country's past and present. He also encourages the readers to take inspiration from the movements and struggles of marginalized and oppressed groups throughout history, as they have the power to bring about real change and progress in society. He also remind the reader that the history is not a passive thing, it's something that is shaped and reshaped by the actions of people, and it's not predetermined. He also encourages the reader to actively participate in the shaping of the future, by being aware of the ongoing struggles and taking actions to support them. He also encourages the reader to think about the future of the United States and to work towards a more just and equitable society for all. Overall, the final chapter provides an uplifting and thought-provoking conclusion to the book. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you have any questions or would like to see more content like this, please don't hesitate to let us know. We're always here to help and are open to your feedback. Thanks again for watching, and we hope to see you in our next video.